Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on the discussion on ADC, Analog to Digital Conversion. On the earlier series discussion on the part two, I actually also doing something quite similar with this video. On the part two series, I have described the terminologies that is essential to describe the ADC. For this video, I'm also going to further discuss more terminologies that is used to describe the ADC part. This will be the part four series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, part one, two, and three, I have put the video link under the description. So please take a look on this video in order to fully complete understand what is ADC and also DAC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your suggestion and also how can I improve my delivery. Thank you so much for your comment also. Thanks, guy. This is what I have done on the part two series discussion on analog to digital conversion. These are the four terminologies that I have described in the part two series. I have mentioned what are the numbers of bits which is using the M bits. Okay, so these are all the bits that is used to represent the amplitude of the sample signal. Next, I have also mentioned what is quantization level. In fact, this L is simply 2 to the power N. N is the numbers of bits, and basically with the numbers of bits, I can actually determine the quantization level. Again, it's also used to represent the amplitude of the sample signal. Next, I have also described what is quantization step size or resolution Q. This Q, in fact, is the voltage difference between the two consecutive quantization level. Simply means that it's a gap between the two quantization level. Last but not least, on the part two series, I have also mentioned about the quantization error. If you still remember, the maximum possible quantization error will be plus minus 0 0.5 Q. Okay, so these are the four terminologies that have been described on part two series discussion on ADC. This is what we have concluded. Okay, so for example, for this stage here, the first one is basically I do a sample. And on this second graph and third graph, the key difference is basically this graph right in the middle, I actually have n equals to 3, which means that the numbers of bits is equals to 3. And I actually can compute that the quantization level is actually equals to 8. While this diagram here, the numbers of bits is 4. And 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. So from here, you can see that the quantization level actually increased. And earlier on, I have mentioned that if I can increase my numbers of bits, which also increase my quantization level, this can more clearly represent the original analog signal. So for example, from here, if you take a clear distinct here, so basically, if let's say the numbers of bit is equal to eight, uh, sorry, numbers of bit is equal to three, and the quantization level is equal to eight, okay, you can see that these first three points, they basically are all quantized to the same quantization level. However, with more sampling point, which means that when I actually have quantization level to be 16, okay, you can see that three of them actually can be so-called represent by three different level. So from here, you can see that if I can increase my N, my L will be increased. And when my L increase the Q, which is the gap between the two quantization level will also be in decrease. And when my Q decrease, I actually can so-called 
represent my analog to digital in a more accurate manner. Okay, so this is what we have discussed on part two. So from here, you can see that these are all the numbers that we convert from the analog signal to the digital signal. So this is all the digital signal that we send over. Oh, we want to do some digital processing. Okay, so from here, this is actually on the diagram on the right here when n equals to 4. Okay, so basically when n is equals to 4, you can see that air 4 bits actually represent a quantization level. So this is what it means and what we have discussed on the part 2 series discussion on analog to digital conversion. Today, we are going to further discuss what is quantization noise power and voltage. How to determine the signal to quantization noise ratio. And last but not least, on the dynamic range DR of an ADC. And before we end this video, I have another example to calculate all this analog to digital conversion in order to let you fully understand. Let's quickly discuss what is quantization noise power and voltage. Okay, due to quantization process, the maximum estimation error will be plus minus 0.5Q, which I have illustrated earlier on. Okay, the above effect is equivalent to noise being added and the quantization noise in watts can actually shown by this equation. So from here, you can see that this is actually the quantization noise power. If I increase the Q, my resolution, if I increase my resolution, which means that the gap between the two quantization levels increase, okay, my quantization noise power also increase. So in order to reduce my quantization noise power, I need to reduce my Q, which means that I need to have a smaller gap between the two quantization levels. And next, you can also compute the quantization noise voltage in RMS. So from here, you can see that this is how we can compute them in a RMS value. Next, okay, I'm going to quickly define on signal to quantization noise power. Okay, so in short, okay, it's actually governed by this equation. So the final, this N is the numbers of bit. Okay, how can you compute the signal to noise ratio? They must be in dB. So whatever the numbers of bit I substitute inside here, the signal to noise quantization will be in dB. Next will be dynamic range. Okay, it's even more simple on dynamic range. It's simply just 6N, okay, which is governed by this part. So this part here, you can also say that it's a dynamic range. So basically the numbers of bits substitute inside the N, okay, you can actually compute the dynamic range. Okay, let's quickly do an example. Discuss the relationship between the numbers of bit used per sample to the quantization error. Okay, so when n increase, okay, my quantization level actually increase because of this formula. When my n actually increase, my quantization level also increase. And when this happen, when my l increase, can you see here? When my l increase here, you can see that my q reduce this q actually is to describe the gap between the two quantization level and when my q reduce okay i actually have a better quantization error which means that the maximum possible quantization error is actually fixed is based on this plus minus 0.5 q and if i can reduce my q okay which means that i can clearly or better to represent the analog signal in a digital format. The signal to noise ratio, if you still remember, is governed by this equation. When my n actually increase, you can see here when my n actually increase, the signal to noise ratio also increase. Okay, so this basically describe the relationship between the numbers of bits versus the quantization error, which is also shown over here. Next, let's do a very Quick example on this example two. A uh, eight volt VP sine wave is quantized into one two zero level. First task, task us to calculate the numbers of bit that is used 
in order to decode the input signal. Okay, so this is the 8 volt B bit sine wave, as you can see from here. So the question tell us that this is a 8 volt B bit. So from here, I can say that this is from here to here is 8 volt. And voltage full swing is from here to here. Because this is a sine wave, so they basically a mirror image. So I know that the voltage full swing is 8 plus 8, which is 16 volt. So my total voltage full swing will be 16 volt. Okay, let's do this end here. Okay, I'm given the numbers of quantization level is 120. How many bits I need in order to have 120 level? Okay, so this is what we have discussed earlier on. L is equal to 2N. And in order to find the numbers of N, okay, I need to reassign the equation in this form. And from here, I can compute that n is equal to 6.9. Okay, remember, the n cannot be a so-called decimal number. It must be a clear integer number. And because of this case, there is no round down the number. We always round up the number. For example, this is 6.1. We can also round up, which means that I can have 7 bit. I can't use 6 bit because with 6 bit, I'm not able to quantize them into 120 level. With only 7 bit, then I'm able to quantize them into 120 level. So therefore, remember these numbers of bit, we cannot round down. We can only round up the number. So 6.9 okay, is in fact will be 7 bits per sample. Even with 6.1, like what I mentioned earlier on, I can only round up which is 7 bits per sample. Next, the maximum signal to quantization noise ratio S over N for this system in decibel. Okay, this is the equation. Okay, so this N is the numbers of bit. Remember, the numbers of bit is 7. Okay, so this is the 6 here. So I can compute that the signal to quantization noise ratio as 43.76 dB. Next, okay, I'm tasked to compute the quantization noise power okay, into a 450 ohm slope. Okay, so remember this is the Q. Okay, remember this is the formula we have described on the part two series discussion on analog to digital conversion. This L can be represented by 2N. Okay, remember earlier on I have mentioned that the voltage full swing is equal to 16. I can have numbers of bit is 7. So from here, I can compute that my Q is equal to 0 0.126 volt. This is the equation to compute the quantization noise power. Q squared divided by 12R. So I have the Q, okay, which is 0 0.126. 12, the R is 450 given by the question. And from here, I can compute that the quantization noise power is equal to 2.94 times 10 to the power minus 6 watt. Next, if signal to noise ratio must exceed 90 dB, determine the numbers of level L required for this PCM. Okay, so this is the case here. I need the signal to noise ratio better than 90 dB. Can okay, see here, I need to be better than 90 dB. So from here, okay, I can see from here, this 90, I just shift this 1.76, which is shown over here. So from here, I can compute that the N is equal to 14.71. So how can I compute the level? Okay, N, again, must be only round up rather than round down. So I round up my N, which is equal to 15 bits per sample. So with this, I can actually calculate my level which is equal to 2 to the power n the n is equal to 15 so from here i can compute that the level is 32 7, 6, 8 level with this i like to stop my discussion please help to like and subscribe once again sincere thanks for your strong support thank you guys